I'm WCPO 9 anchor Craig McKee. It's a pleasure to welcome you, of course, to the Easter Seals Military and Veterans Services 2020 Town Hall Forum. Obviously, this is a little different uh, than normal. Easter Seals today is going to be giving you uh, an update on the services here in the community uh, over the past year and also some of the challenges, the hurdles, and the impacts from the current coronavirus pandemic on the programs locally. Um, one of those impacts, of course, is the fact that we are doing this virtually and not in person. We were supposed to be doing this over coffee and orange juice and eggs and, and toast and bacon and everything else uh, for a nice uh, big breakfast, but uh, here we are. So I hope you have coffee in hand. Uh, maybe some of you are in your comfortable PJs this morning. That's okay, too. That's what Zoom's all about, right? It's all about the information this morning. Again, we do have your mics muted as we go along. Uh, the presenter's mics will be brought up and be live. And uh, if you have any questions at all during the town hall here, if you're familiar with the chat option on Zoom, what we want you to do is go ahead and send any of your questions through private message to Fergal Reed, and that is F-E-A-R-G-H-A-L. It should auto-populate once you start typing that uh, read. We're gonna try to answer as many questions as possible uh, as we get through this and as we get towards the end of the program. So please direct message those if you have any questions that pop up as we go along. A uh, bit of background on me, I'm an Air Force veteran, nine years, uh, served uh, the first part of my career in law enforcement. The wonderful Air Force taught me how to pick locks and defeat alarm systems, uh, which I did on military bases. Long story short, uh, I ended up cross-training, went into broadcast journalism and worked for Air Force News, a career that took me all around the globe, uh, and then uh, took me to a few different places here on the civilian side of things and, until 2015, when the job opportunity popped up at WCPO. My family and I moved uh, to Cincinnati, and I can honestly say uh, for any veterans that are on the call this morning, you know, sometimes it can be difficult to find that settling point where you feel like you're, you're finally where you're supposed to be. And Cincinnati's the first place that I really felt like I could hang my hat and I, I felt like I was home. Uh, my entire family, we have been able to exhale and just enjoy life here. And it's such a, a, a beautiful uh, town. WCPO 9 itself, uh, very uh, blessed to work at a place that embraces veterans. We have a number of vets that work at WCPO. Uh, they've also allowed me to create a segment, a weekly segment called Homefront that airs on Mondays typically. And it allows me to feature uh, a number of stories. Anthony Teague, who you're going to hear from a little bit later um, in this program, he was one of the veterans uh, I showcased in his nonprofit. And, I, you know, it's literally ran the gamut from, from talking about veterans issues to, you know, talking about a 96-year-old World War II veteran who right now is tied in a pandemic and they needed to celebrate his birthday and how the neighbors and the American Legion came together to do that. So, um, so that is kind of a quick background uh, on me for those of you who don't know me. This morning, you're gonna learn a little bit more about Easter Seals Military and Veterans Services Program and serving veterans and our military families though, right here in the greater Cincinnati area and how you can also lend your support because obviously that is key. Before we get started, we do wanna recognize a number of uh, people. First, our sponsor, TriHealth, which has made this town hall forum possible. TriHealth has been a longtime supporter, as many of you know, uh, the Easter Seals Military and Veterans Services, and I know how thankful that organization, of course, is. Also like to acknowledge some of our guests in the town hall. You may have to tab through to see them. Um, go ahead and wave at the camera, though, if, if you hear your name, from Senator Rob Portman's office, Nan Cahall, from Congressman Brad Winstrip's office, Austin Heller, State Representative Catherine Ingram, we have State Representative Bridget Kelly on the call today, Hamilton County Commissioner Victoria Parks, also a military veteran, uh, Hamilton County Municipal Veterans Court Judge Brad Greenberg joining us this morning, also former State Senator Lou Terhar, and representatives from Kentucky's Veterans Treatment Courts as well. We appreciate all of you being here. I would also like to now turn it over to Angela Williams, who is the President and CEO of the National Easter Seals Organization. Angela is also an Air Force veteran, not that we're stacking the deck with the Air Force here, but go blue. Um, she served as the Judge Advocate General's Corps in that. She has more than 30 years of experience in both the corporate and the nonprofit sectors. Angela is joining us right now from Easter Seals headquarters in Chicago from the Windy City. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Craig, and good morning, everyone from Chicago. I want to thank you for investing this time into learning about the needs of veterans, how Easter Seals is responding, and how we can all work together to ensure 
that those who have worn our nation's uniforms have every opportunity to be successful as civilians in our great nation. I'm very proud of Easter Seals uh, and that the fact that we've been caring for veterans for many decades since World War II. Our services have evolved to meet the needs of those returning from service. One of the most important things, however, for us to acknowledge is that when caring for veterans, it is their injuries that are not always visible and they're not always physical. We're seeing even greater needs among veterans today when it comes to mental health care, post-traumatic stress disorder, and addiction. We know that when mental health care is not addressed early, it can cause cascading impacts like unemployment, homelessness, and increased isolation. At its worst, it can lead to death by suicide. Today, we are seeing a major problem across the country with veteran substance abuse. At times, this is the result of powerful prescription medications being used to treat physical injuries and mental health, which can lead to addiction. Other times, veterans are turning to alcohol and other drugs as a mean of, means of coping with injuries or traumatic experiences during their deployments. Easter Seals is doing work across the country to address veteran substance abuse. The CVS Health Foundation is a major partner in this fight, investing in veteran services at Easter Seals affiliates around the United States, including a $100,000 grant in Cincinnati. We experience great success when we have collaborative community relationships guiding veterans back to a place where they feel valued and recognize that there is a brighter future ahead for them. I want to thank the Greater Cincinnati Easter Seals Military and Veteran Services team for forging great relationships with other human services organizations, veterans courts, the local VA hospital, and with employers who are all willing to invest back in those who sacrificed for all of us. Together, we really can make a difference in the lives of veterans. Again, thank you for joining us this morning and being a part of this very important forum. Now, I'll turn it back over to you, Craig. Thanks. All right, Angela Williams, thank you so much. Again, from the Queen City back here, uh, to the, from the Windy City to the Queen City, if I can get that straightened out. Uh, I'd like to now to actually introduce Pam Green. Now, Pam is the president and CEO of Easter Seals, serving Greater Cincinnati. Uh, Pam has been part of the organization since 2003. Over the past 17 years, Easter Seals has grown significantly in how it serves the community as well, including a major partnership with Messer Construction, well-known construction company here, obviously, in the tri-state for construction employment training, expanded opportunities for people living with disabilities to secure community employment, and an affirmed commitment, really, to serving our region's veterans as well. Pam, good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much, Craig. You know, as Zoom calls go, the, you know, the unexpected always happens, and I'm delighted the universe aligned. Uh, Rumpke was just on my street, and so there was lots of great noise in the background, so glad we uh, got rid of that. So thank you all so much for joining us. I just wanted to, um, uh, before I start, I was scrolling through the folks who were here, and I uh, wanted to thank P.G. Sittenfeld, uh, our city council member, for joining us this morning. So good to see you, P.G. Um, and if you're at home, maybe we'll get to see that baby. Uh, so thank you to all of you for, um, for joining us this morning. And I wanted to just take a couple of minutes to talk a little bit about Easter Seals. We're gonna spend a lot of time talking about veterans, um, but I also just wanted to share a little with you about our agency. Um, you know, Easter Seals, I, I always go back to, a little bit to the history. So uh, I'm really proud. Easter Seals has been around for 100 years. Last year, we celebrated our 100th anniversary, and we were founded right here in Ohio. And so I'm very proud that um, we have been a part of changing the outcomes for people with disabilities and for veterans and for people living with economic disadvantages across, the, across our, our country. And it started right here. So when we were founded 100 years ago, uh, services for people with disabilities did not exist. They were institutionalized, um, you know, and their families, it, it, it could create real financial hardship. So when we were founded, we wanted to ensure that people with disabilities had access to services. So we created the Ohio plan, which was adopted by almost every, by every state in the nation 
and became the foundation um, for what is today the provision for disability services in the Social Security Act. So we had a pretty big national impact then. 30 years ago, we'll celebrate the anniversary this summer of the Americans with Disabilities Act. And uh, Easter Seals was at the table at the drafting of that legislation. And I think that we can all agree, whether we have a diagnosed disability or not, that the Americans with Disabilities Act has benefited our entire country through expanding the workforce, through uh, making it easy for any of us to get into buildings or to do whatever access. When you, uh, when you support people with disabilities, you support our entire country and our community. Um, and you know, most importantly for what we're talking about today, as Angela mentioned, we've been serving veterans since World War II. And um, in Cincinnati in 2012, uh, we, we reaffirmed Easter Seals commitment. Uh, you know, we started working with the uh, Carol Ann and, uh, and Ralph B. Hale Foundation and the Farmer, Farmer Family Foundation. We wanted to ensure that the veterans that were coming home from OEF and, IE, and IEF had access to the resources that they needed to successfully reintegrate to civilian life. Um, and so we pulled together a group of collaborative agencies, we pulled together a group of funders, and we started, I think, what's a model for other communities in regards to how we serve veterans here. Um, <clears throat> our veteran team, our military and veterans services, uh, our model is built on veterans serving veterans. So uh, when we introduce our team here in a, in a bit, uh, you'll see it's, it's kind of We'll wait to see if there's any, uh, I guess, branch competition stuff going on. Uh, we, we hear a lot of those uh, insults traded back, I'm sorry, compliments traded back and forth between Air Force and Army and Navy and uh, all of the folks that we serve. So that's always, um, always an interesting thing. But um, we really, we exist to remove barriers to employment. And because uh, I think we all know and, and we've experienced in this pandemic, we always say at Easter Seals that employment is more than a paycheck. Um, and I don't know about you, but I am feeling that right now. Uh, just the fact that we're on this Zoom call instead of all being together, it has caused me to, to really reflect on what work means in my life. And um, you do see that it's more than a paycheck, that it is that it's that social network. It's, uh, it's that connection to, to achievement. Um, it, it's really just the joy of work, quite frankly, is, uh, is something that we can't take advantage, uh, can't take for granted in this world where we live on, on Zoom calls. Um, one of the things that I want to, to you to keep in mind as we talk is that 85% of the people that we serve were already living in poverty. Um, before this coronavirus hit. These, uh, this is a pretty at-risk population that we serve. And folks come to Easter Seals because they wanna make a difference in their lives. And so um, the people who are with us are learning job skills, they're enrolled in educational programs, uh, they're taking the steps that they need to provide for their families, uh, to become less reliant on benefits. And um, this coronavirus has, has stopped some things in their tracks, I think. Uh, <clears throat> we know that the people that we serve are gonna need us more than ever coming out of this. Uh, quite frankly, you know, because we're connecting people to employment in almost any organization, it's uh, you know, last in, first out. And so it's so important that we be there for the people that we serve. Um, our team has responded in incredible ways. Um, because I know that, because we know that the folks that we serve are, are at risk, um, we have probably called more than a thousand people that we've served to just ensure that they're okay, that their basic needs are met, that they have food, that their children are safe. What can we do to help you when those resources aren't there? Um, our, uh, you know, we've always, I, I said to our team, you know, we've always felt like our services are essential. And uh, quite frankly, in, um, in the process of this pandemic, it was, it was validated by, uh, I guess, by, uh, uh, by executive order. Um, almost all of our services uh, were deemed essential. So we've continued to work. Many of you have toured our packaging and fulfillment center. 
um, in Cincinnati or in, uh, in Butler County, um, our work has continued there. Uh, we continue to make those uh, clinical trial test kits uh, to ensure that our, our nation stays healthy and we're ready for uh, the next pandemic. Um, our construction pathway, uh, you know, the folks that we serve are building hospitals. You know, we're involved at the Children's Tower, uh, the construction of the tower at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. And uh, just last week, we placed three people um, on the job. So folks are continuing um, to get work in this environment, which is just absolutely incredible. So um, uh, I think for me, the one of the biggest takeaways, like I said, it's uh, thinking about what work means to me. Um, but I think it's also the fact that the folks that we serve at Easter Seals are the essential workers. Um, they're the folks that are in grocery stores. They are the folks that are building the hospitals. Um, they're the folks that are uh, working in phlebotomy positions in hospitals. Um, they're building boxes uh, for food shipments around uh, around the globe. Our folks have continued to work through this. And I'm just so proud. Um, you know, in 2019, we placed more than 600 people in jobs. And when you add up all of their wages and um, what they're contributing to our local economy, it's collectively, it's, it's, um, it's more than $12 million in wages that people supported by Easter Seals are earning right now. And that's $12 million that's being reinvested in families. It's being reinvested in our community. And so um, I just want to say thank you to all of you for what you're doing. Um, like I said, coming out of this, I think um, our work is going to be more important than ever. And we have to be sure that we're there to help people that have lost their jobs during this pandemic, to find new gainful employment, to keep their skills fresh, um, to keep things going. Uh, the, the military and veterans program, um, when we started this up, one of the things that we wanted to make sure of was that this did not become a government program. And so um, our program is funded almost completely with philanthropy. Uh, we have um, some money that the city, uh, the city of Cincinnati, thank you um, to the folks that are on the call from the city. Um, the city of Cincinnati provides some support for our program, but I think as everyone here knows, um, our city is challenged right now and they're having to make cuts. As, um, and so that's tough. We have our biggest fundraiser of the year is our, um, our military and veterans services, our serve, uh, that we've done it up at the Western Southern Tennis Open. Um, it raises almost half of our operating budget and we're not gonna be able to host that event this year. So um, we're trying to adjust, we're trying to make do, but uh, you know, support from the community is, is more important than ever. So I think you're gonna hear uh, from some of the folks that we've served, you're gonna hear more details about the work that we're doing and what's happening during this pandemic. Um, but uh, I just wanna say thank you. And I wanna say a special thank you to the folks that are on the call that have supported our program. Um, thank you so much, Jeanette and TriHealth for uh, sponsoring this town hall. I also wanna thank Dan Bates from the Hamilton Chamber of Commerce, um, Chris Botnick from the Carol Ann and Ralph V. Hale Foundation, Mary Beth Martin from the Farmer Family Foundation, Mark Romito from AT&T, Robbie Suggs from First Financial Bank, and Kim Vogelsang from Duke Energy. Um, thank you so much for your support of our important work and thanks for being with us today. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Craig, so thank you. All right, Pam, thank you so much. And I uh, just want to remind everybody that's on the call, maybe you missed the first couple minutes, you were still trying to tap into the call here. Uh, down at the bottom of your screen, right next to the share screen button on the right side, you'll see a button that says chat. If you have any questions at all as we go through the program this morning, just a reminder, uh, send those to Fergal Reed. That's F-E-A-R-G-H-A-L, Reed. And uh, we'll get those into the chat. And then at the end, we'll have a Q&A and, and uh, all the experts on all the issues will be answering any of the concerns or questions you have. All right, joining us now is Scott Robinson. Scott is the director of Easter Seals Military and Veteran Services. By the way, he also served in the Air Force, go blue, uh, for 30 years, earning the rank of Chief Master Sergeant. He served all over the globe, from Europe to Japan to Iraq, and was responsible for 3,000 personnel under his command 
Scott says the military gave him so much more than a career. It also gave him a purpose and a family, a family he continues to serve right now in his role at Easter Seals. Scott, good morning to you. Good morning, Greg. Thank you for you and Angela also supporting the blue here for Air Force. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm Scott Robinson, Director of Military Veteran Services, and I'm joined on this call today by my team, all Army veterans, Chief Warrant Officer Sarah Busher, Sergeant Chris Macklin, and Specialist Jennifer Wells. Together, the four of us have over 62 years of military experience, including four combat tours of duty, and these amazing veterans know how to get it done. This morning, it is my privilege to update you on the impact this team is making to the lives of veterans in our community, and also to outline the challenges and opportunities we face moving forward. Personally, as a veteran who served 30 years in the Air Force, I can honestly say that in my opinion, no other veteran service organization is as qualified, capable, or as dedicated to making an impact within the local veteran community as we are. And thanks to each of you, together we are making a difference. Because of you, Easter Seals has been able to help thousands of veterans and their families locally. To date, we've provided emergency support for more than 3,000 local veterans. We've placed over 850 into employment, helped more than 100 homeless vets find housing, and provided educational services to over 150 vets with disabilities. Easter Seals is the go-to partner for United Way's 211 emergency hotline. When a veteran calls United Way, the United Way calls us. We are a proud partner with the City of Cincinnati through the Human Services Fund. We partner with the Hamilton and Butler County's Veteran Treatment Court, and we've operated employment programs under the Department of Labor's Homeless Veterans Reintegration Program. Because my military and veteran service team is 100% staffed by veterans, we know firsthand the complex challenges faced by veterans and their families in our community. Regardless of discharge, disability, or personal circumstances, we treat every veteran with honor, dignity, and respect. We work with them to identify their needs and empower them to overcome barriers and secure sustainable employment so they in turn can turn their lives around. I am proud to say that no veteran is ever turned away by us, period. At this moment, I'd like to take a moment to share a video of one of the veterans we serve, and his name is Jay. Can we please play that video? Hello, everybody. My name is Jay Wooden. I'm a veteran of the United States Army, six years, perfect record. After the military, I got into trucking. I worked for companies. I was also an owner operator, and then I just ended up driving for companies. Uh, I've done it for 19 years, me and a half miles, and I was out and I made a mistake, and I ended up in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, where I went to a treatment program at the Joseph House. And after nine months of treatment, I was allowed to get a job. And uh, Easter Seals had their hand out and says, well, come work with us. And since then, I've been working here for 11 months and I have acquired my own apartment, uh, all furnished, brand new and everything because Easter Seals gave me the hand up instead of the hand out that I needed. I am so grateful for Easter Seals and uh, they, they gave me back my pride and gave me back my self-esteem, which uh, without them, I don't think I could have survived. So I thank very much for Easter Seals. Thank you for your time. Thank you for that. Veterans like Jay remind us that our work is critically important now more than ever. In Cincinnati today, over 3,000 veterans are unemployed and struggling to support their families. Let me say that number again, 3,000 veterans. In this region, over 900 veterans are currently homeless. The situation is even more challenging for veterans who have a less than honorable discharge as they are automatically disqualified from the majority of traditional supportive services offered by the VA and many nonprofits. If you didn't know, over the last two years, several local veteran serving organizations have closed and others have become increasingly selective about which veterans they serve. As a result, we at Easter Seals have seen a 500% increase in demand for our services, which we know will continue to increase exponentially at the end of this COVID-19 pandemic. Locally, hundreds if not thousands of veterans are losing their jobs and their ability to provide for their families. Many feel isolated and alone and are falling back into patterns of addiction and helplessness. We've already experienced an increase in calls from veterans suffering from depression in the last two weeks. And thank goodness, we were here to receive those calls. 
In response to these challenging times, we've adapted our services so that we can continue to provide critical resources, education, and employment services for veterans. As you know, we veterans are resilient and hardwired to serve. During this pandemic, several veterans are stepping up to fill essential positions. I'm proud to say since the middle of March, my team has placed 12 veterans into employment with partners such as Kroger, First Choice Aerospace, Amazon, and Mid-America Safety Solutions. And half of these vets were homeless or living in shelters. At the start of this year, we anticipated answering over a thousand calls through our emergency hotline, and we set a target of assisting 120 veterans to find jobs. We don't know right now how many more we might have to help in the wake of COVID-19, but we are ready to answer that call. As the economy struggles to get back on speed, the need for Easter Seals grows, and we are determined to meet that need. It won't be easy. We know government funding has been reduced as a result of the pandemic. And although we continue to pursue alternate federal, state, and local government revenue, local philanthropy remains critical to this pro program's immediate survival. Easter Seals Military and Veteran Service would not have been possible without the startup investment and continued philanthropic support of this fantastic community. Lastly, I believe every veteran deserves to thrive in our community after military service, and no man nor woman who has served our great country, no matter the category of military discharge, should ever be in need of employment, housing, or health benefits. We at Easter Seals Military and Veteran Services know that it is your support that allows us to open doors to all of our veterans. It is your investment that provides us with the resources to answer those life-saving calls. It is your network that creates employment opportunities for veterans who want to earn a better future. It is your commitment that is creating a community of change. It is your passion that inspires us to do better and to do more. And for that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Back to you, Craig. All right, Scott, thank you so much. You know, and I appreciate the fact that you, you're explaining really that, uh, you know, for some veterans out there, there isn't hope. There's not uh, that automatic guarantee that the government's going to take care of them. And I, in, in reporting with Homefront and doing a number of projects over the years, I do run into civilians, even my fellow coworkers, that just don't understand our veterans. Um, and they automatically think, well, you serve, therefore you get a paycheck for the rest of your life from the government, or you get health care, or you get all these things. And that's just not the case. And that's why it's so critical, obviously, for organizations like Easter Seals to be involved. But right now, we're in very interesting times. And you did mention there how your team has kind of adapted during the COVID-19 response. Can you provide some more details on what that looks like? Absolutely, Craig. In accordance with health and safety, social distancing protocols, lately, many of our engagement activities, our outreach activities now have to occur virtually or by telephone. Any in essential in-person meetings are one-on-one. -on -one. Either we make appointments at our United Way offices or we meet them at a safe place in, within the community. And this allows my staff to meet the needs of our individuals in a safe and controlled manner. Also, we continue to operate our emergency hotline 24 seven so that any veteran who feels isolated can reach us despite physical restrictions caused by this pandemic and they need to know that they are not alone. Me and my staff, we perform regular checks with our veterans we serve to make sure they're doing okay. If they're in need, we utilize our community partners and their resources to ensure each veteran has what they need to get through the crisis. And as I mentioned earlier, Chris, Jennifer, and Sarah continue to work with our veterans to secure and retain meaningful employment for each of them. It hasn't been easy, but it's forced us to be innovative and tenacious. When the pandemic is over, we'll be able to take these strategies and tools that have helped us stay connected to veterans, adapt them so that we can serve even more veterans moving forward. You know, I've d done a story with Chris and Jennifer, Chris Macklin and Jennifer Wells. Uh, it's pretty amazing. And I was, I was astonished that when I was in that office and calls were coming in and stacks of paperwork, that literally, at least at that time, it was basically a two-person, aside from yourself, it was like, like a two-person mission. And they explained to me and Chris explained to me that, you know, if it happens to be 6.30 at night and they have to use their own personal vehicles to go take care of a veteran, that's what they do. And that's what they've done. And they've gone and packed up veterans and moved them from house to house. Um, it's way beyond the call of duty to a certain extent. But there is that common thread. Obviously, you have veterans helping veterans. And you know what? We're going to do whatever we can to help out. But it's not just the veterans within your organization. It really takes the community um, to, to fight this response, to help with this response. Can you explain a little bit more about the community's role? Absolutely. You know, at Easter Seals, we believe that community-wide problems require community-based solutions. And that's why we personally have partnered with over 300 businesses and community partners to make sure veterans have employer 
and resource networks they need to overcome obstacles and succeed in employment. I'm very lucky to work with an amazing military and veteran advisory council. These local community leaders, many who are veterans themselves, personify the passion, dedication, and commitment that our community has for serving veterans. And at this time, I'd like to actually invite Gary Dent, an Army veteran, and the chairman of my Military and Veteran Advisory Council to explain a little bit about his role. Gary? Good morning, all, and thank you, Scott, for your introduction and for the honorable service. Listen, uh, I'm a Vietnam-era veteran. I served in the National Guard and the Reserves. Uh, it's truly an honor to work alongside your team, Scott, and the Veterans Services Committee. Uh, it is a great way to see firsthand how you make a difference and your team makes a difference in the lives of veterans. My entire career has been centered on helping others to achieve success in the workplace. It is what I do, it is my passion, it is my purpose in life to do that. Essentially removing roadblocks and barriers to the employment, uh, of others getting employment, taking care of their families and achieving their personal aspirations. And so here's an example. If you attended the Easter Seals 2019 Brighter Future Celebration, you might remember a person, his name was Juan Pacheco. Juan uh, received an injury while serving on, in the military. He decided he needed to leave and he came to Cincinnati with a passion to work in IT and also to do research. He found a position at a local university assisting a professor. He worked that job and was very happy doing that job and was really good at it, just like his passion in being in the military. The professor grew older and less independent and Juan had to shift what he was doing. He became a full-time caregiver for that professor. The professor died and Juan faced new challenges. He was without a job and he also became a homeless parent. Juan knew that he couldn't stop, that he had to keep going just as he did in the military. And I'm so proud to say that he stepped up and figured out I cannot think poorly of myself and poorly of my condition. He reached out to East Seals Military and Veteran Services. Juan, like others, continued to tell us about their story and let me read a letter that, I'd like to share a letter that he uh, shared with us. So Juan sent this letter to us and the letter, oops, excuse me. Juan in this letter said that. Interesting question. Oops. You know, technology is wonderful when it works. Juan shared his uh, letter with us. It essentially said, hey, listen, I was uh, feeling like the country had changed. It wasn't looking out for people like me. I felt desperate. I had no uh, self-esteem and hope for my future, but the military services and veterans committee stepped up and they got me involved in education. They helped me get a job and now I'm fully employed and enjoying my career as a military I'm sorry, it's an IT professional. I'm grateful to the Military Services Committee and to East Seals for seeing that a person like me deserves a chance, an opportunity. You gave me hope, you gave me a vision for the future, and now I'm a successful human being. Thank you, Military Veterans Committee and East Seals. Now we can't do this kind of work by ourselves. We need your help. We need the help of the community. And so with that, the Military Services Committee has to reach out and ask for the generosity and kindness of the community. More than 90% of our annual budget comes from philanthropy. Each year, Greater Cincinnati helps us raise thousands of dollars for support, and we are unable to have our annual r -Serve event at the Western Southern this year. So we more than ever need the help of the community. We're fortunate that we have people like Juliet Tassat, who is a wonderful person who understands our mission. And she's here today to talk about why our mission is so important. Juliet. 
Hi, everyone. Um, first, I want to give a personal thank you to all the veterans that are on the call today. Those of us who aren't veterans are only here because we value you and respect you and are always looking for a way to say thank you. I'm not a veteran, but there's always been a special place in my heart for veterans. Their strength, their bravery, their willingness to sacrifice everything for people they will never meet and a country they will always love amazes me. I came to know Easter Seals Military and Veteran Services through Steve Mullins, who's a Marine, and he's got the most energy of anyone I've ever met. I adore him. But he taught me that Easter Seals helps mil the military and veterans. I, I didn't know that. I didn't actually know what Easter Seals did. And what impressed me most and drew me in and keeps bringing me back is that Easter Seals focuses on restoring the person. Instead of just giving veterans a paycheck and having them go buy meals, they give them jobs and homes and purpose. Easter Seals restores their sense of pride that comes along with earning a paycheck and their sense of belonging in a community that goes, comes along with owning a home. And I wanted to be a part of that. I don't own a company, so I can't give veterans jobs, and I don't own a hospital, so I can't give veterans health care. But I do have a lot of time and a little bit of money, so I give as much of that as I can to help as many veterans as I can to let them know that that's the least I can do to say thank you. As Americans, we know what freedom means. It's joy, it's peace, it's the right to dream, but we also know it isn't free. I can never fully repay veterans for their bravery and their sacrifice, but I can write a check. It's a physical check. Veterans write a different kind of check, the one that they pay with their lives. When veterans come back from the service, the sights, the sounds, the memories stay with them forever. And some have a harder time struggling with those sights and sounds and memories than others. To the tune of 22 veterans a day commit suicide in this country. And that's not okay. That's why I hope you will join me in supporting local veterans and giving back them their right to dream. I pledge to help as many veterans as possible with a matching gift in the Give Vets 22 campaign beginning in May. And I hope you'll join me in letting veterans know they're loved, they're appreciated, and probably more than anything else, they would be missed if they were gone. Thanks. Absolutely, Julia, thank you so much for that. And, and you know, one veteran is too many when it comes to veteran suicide. And obviously there are so many layers to the issue, um, but Easter Seals and those who support Easter Seals can be a part of the solution. So thank you so much for those words, Juliet. Uh, thank you to Scott and Gary as well. And as you can imagine, the, the economic downturn right now caused by this pandemic, it's hitting everyone. It's gonna have ripple effects in our community, not only weeks down the road, but we're talking years down the road because of how much uh, funding from all the organizations is being ripped out from our cities and our counties and everything. Our region's veterans who are already struggling right now, uh, they're going to need to turn to someone for help. And, you know, Easter Seals is here and Easter Seals Give Vets 22 initiative. Um, you know, please support it if you can, any means, it, you know, 10, 20, 50, we always say this when we do our telethons at WCPO, you know, $10, $20, $50, it all counts, it all matters. Um, but for some of those uh, on the call right now, obviously, if you have $5,000 sitting around doing absolutely nothing right now, Easter Seals can definitely put that <laughs> to work. Uh, joining us now, though, is someone with firsthand experience with working with veterans who are taking those steps to turn their lives around. Uh, the Honorable Judge Brad Greenberg presides over Hamilton County's Municipal Veterans Court. Veterans Treatment Court is a judge-supervised treatment program whose goal is to help United States veterans address the issues that led to contact with the criminal justice system. Good morning, Judge. How are you? Good. Thank you, Craig. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm really uh, glad to be part of this and honored to uh, follow my good friend, Juliet Tissett, this morning. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, Veterans Court. Uh, and then tell you how Easter Seals supports our mission. Uh, I've led Veterans Court for uh, the last uh, three and a half years. Veterans Court is uh, certified and supervised by the Ohio Supreme Court. Uh, it's designed to provide support and services to veterans who are involved uh, with our criminal justice system, but it emphasizes uh, treatment uh, rather than incarceration. 
Uh, most of the veterans are uh, combat veterans. Uh, they suffer from PTSD, uh, substance abuse issues. Uh, and then in my court, municipal court, they come into the court after committing misdemeanor crimes. Uh, it's mostly DUIs, uh, but we also see uh, assaults and thefts as well. They come into the court and it's a year long commitment on their part. Uh, they are required to go through random urine screens, uh, with a three to one program where they have to go to three self-help meetings a week, two group meetings, uh, and one individual counseling meeting. Uh, it, there's a system where we use rewards and sanctions uh, uh, to uh, encourage and incentivize them. Uh, and then if they are successful, uh, at the end of the program, we go as easy as we can on them legally uh, to, uh, to try to help them move forward and uh, return to being productive members of society. Uh, many times, uh, all the charges can be dismissed uh, at the end uh, if they're successful. Uh, we've had a very uh, successful uh, recidivism rate. Uh, we only have about 10% uh, of our graduates who end up coming back. Uh, and that's opposed to about 30 to 35% of the general population that don't go through this year long treatment court. Uh, the veterans for their part, they, they like being part of a structured program. Uh, they like the camaraderie of sitting with and being part of, uh, with, along with other veterans. Uh, so it's been, uh, it's been a, a great process uh, in court for me to be a part of and, and to help our veterans. Uh, now Easter Seals is a huge supporter of our court. And uh, it starts with Jennifer Wells, who uh, was introduced earlier. She's a member of our treatment team. So we have Thursday morning meetings where we discuss the upcoming veterans on the docket. Uh, and then court starts after that meeting. Uh, so Jennifer uh, gets to know the veterans in our court. Uh, she is able to answer their questions and share with them the different uh, services that Easter Seals has to offer. Uh, on top of that, um, She's able to provide uh, help for veterans in our court that need it, uh, household items, uh, sometimes emergency funds for either rent or utilities. Uh, she's able, she's in the past uh, been able to secure different moving companies uh, who volunteer to help veterans uh, move to a new apartment or a house uh, that are able to get people to assist our veterans with household repair projects. Uh, sometimes uh, emergency food or grocery requests. Uh, and also one of the big uh, helps has been with transportation. Uh, transportation is uh, uh, a real challenge for many of our veterans because when they come in on a DUI, their driving privileges are often uh, revoked uh, or limited. Uh, and so it's very difficult for them to get around not only to court, but to the various uh, uh, therapeutic groups that we require them to attend. Uh, so she's able to line up uh, some either Uber, Lyft, uh, cab companies that will volunteer hours uh, for veterans. So um, I want to thank uh, Easter Seals and uh, Army veteran, again, Jennifer Wells, for the support that uh, they offer our court. Uh, and uh, Craig, thanks again for uh, hosting. Judge Greenberg, thank you so much uh, for those words. Uh, another story that I've covered on Homefront, the uh, Veterans Court, and it, you know, it's spectacular to watch that process and to hear their stories and how, you know, life kind of went off track a little bit, but they're on the right track now. And uh, um, Elena Bishop, uh, who I had interviewed at one point, her life really took uh, a left turn. And now she's, you know, focused on getting her law degree and, uh, and doing great things. So I wish all the veterans out there, obviously, in the court system, you know, the best and, and the best of success. And of course, all of that is possible because of the amazing uh, steps that our court system has taken to make those connections and make that possible along with the uh, Easter Seals as well. Another gentleman that I actually showcased and featured on, uh, as I mentioned at the top of my opening statements uh, on our home front segment, is this next gentleman. He's our final speaker this morning, uh, Navy veteran Anthony Teague with Mid-America Safety Solutions. Mid-America provides temporary traffic control to construction companies, utilities, city governments as well. Uh, now, he's hired four different veterans, served by Easter Seals, Military and Veteran Services, also working to hire another veteran this month. He also runs Veteran Threads, and this was the nonprofit that I featured that's been instrumental in providing business attire to vets served by Easter Seals so they can look their best for those job interviews and beyond. Anthony, good morning to you. Good morning, Craig. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it so much. 
I, uh, uh, I've, I wanted to thank Chris Macklin and Easter Seals. Chris reached out to me and asked me if I'd be a part of this. Um, I, I've been, I'm, uh, first of all, a little bit about myself. I'm a, uh, I was fourth generation military member myself, United States Navy, not Air Force. So I apologize to all of you. Uh, but uh, my son and nephew are now serving. My father served all the way to my great great grandfather. Uh, so five generations of service based right out of, out of Cincinnati. Um, I have made it a mission the last 13, uh, 13, 14 years now that I have been, uh, basically I've been in a recruiting role uh, and I have found uh, that it's extremely vital to bring our uh, men and women who have served this nation uh, to assist them in finding roles uh, post-transition from coming out of service. Uh, over the years, it, it has gotten better, but, uh, in, you know, years ago, uh, as those individuals would transition, they were pretty much given a, uh, a handshake for your service, thanks for your time, with very little opportunity or resources available to be able to return to a civilian type of opportunity, uh, especially considering all of the struggles that they may have coming back from combat and things like that. Um, you know, as, as we all know, uh, veterans uh, are a very high risk uh, group of individuals to, to either be homeless uh, or without jobs, as stated with uh, drug issues and things like that, uh, dealing with mental health issues, PTSD, suicide prevention, things like that. Uh, I have found it to be vital to bring veterans back into our community, back into our community as civilians, finding them solid roles, and, and you find a tremendous amount of positive attributes that come from veterans. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, leadership programs. Uh, in my opinion, you won't find better leaders than what we get from the United States military. They receive some of the best training in the world. Um, you know, things of discipline, waking up early morning, working long days has never been an issue for a veteran. Uh, I don't know of any veteran ever that's ever worked an eight hour day, 40 hour work week during service time in my life. Um, so, you know, to find those individuals that are, that are uh, disciplined, able to wake up every day, work a good long day, ready to get their hands dirty, uh, use their mind, work together in team leadership, uh, uh, in, in a team environment, things like that have proven to be uh, instrumental for some of, the, uh, some of these companies. Uh, the company that I currently work for, Mid-America Safety Solutions, has stated we do safety for groups like Duke Energy uh, while they're on the road. We are currently operating at about 80% veteran operated here in Cincinnati. I started it back in August. Uh, our company's about three years old, and they're running at about 60 to 65% overall uh, through the 80 employees that we have currently that are United States military veterans, including the owner, Jeff Plump, who was an eight-year Marine uh, himself. Um, we just find that, uh, again, uh, those attributes that come along with bringing veterans to the table um, uh, really tend to help us build our company. Uh, it's also a proven fact that putting individuals back to work coming out post-service uh, is definitely a barrier between some of those mental health issues. Keeping a busy person, keep, keeping yourself busy is able to uh, help some of these individuals maintain uh, uh, a better peace of mind, able to work instead of sitting at home and dwelling on things that they may have seen or dealt with in their past. Uh, Easter Seals has provided us with some amazing talent. Uh, in fact, my very first hire uh, that I hired here in Cincinnati to come on board uh, was actually just promoted uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, became a lead for us, is now driving his own truck, has, uh, is operating a team, uh, has yet to miss a single day of work, has yet to call in, and been, uh, been five minutes late uh, since August, or it's August or somewhere around that, uh, that time frame when he came on board. Uh, Al Caroma came to us through uh, Chris Macklin, uh, and uh, the gentleman's from, from Freetown, uh, South Africa, uh, or Freetown, Africa, and uh, became a United States Army veteran and uh, uh, was looking for a job opportunity. And uh, just as I thought, he came on board and has proven to be an absolutely instrumental part of our company. Um, you know, I, I, can't, I can't stress enough um, how much bringing these individuals back to work, how, how uh, it does build up a, a tremendous amount of pride in myself. Um, Again, being five generations of service with my son currently serving, uh, I feel like it's the only way that I have an opportunity now to give back uh, and continue working with the men and women that I, I enjoyed working with when I was in the service. Uh, you know, uh, to Veteran Threads, as, as Craig had mentioned, you know, as a nonprofit organization, do what I can to assist homeless veterans. 
uh, with clothing, things like that. And I'm going to continue to do anything I can um, to assist our veterans. And Easter Shields has just been instrumental in, in making that happen. And I look forward to working with them. And if, uh, if there's anything that I can do for anybody uh, assisting a veteran and, and bringing them back to work or doing what we can't, please let me know. And I'm, I'm certainly proud to be a part of this. Awesome, Anthony. Thank you so much. And, you know, everyone, it's baseball season. We're not at a game, right? But I have to share this real quick. If you didn't see the story I did on Anthony uh, and on Veteran Threads. So Anthony is a huge baseball guy. Had, had memory, you know, baseballs that were worth hundreds. He had gloves. He had all this stuff, this huge collection. He sold all but just a couple items uh, to be able to fund Veteran Threads and to be able to launch that nonprofit because he believes in the mission so much about supporting our veterans. So I know as a baseball fan myself, that, could, that you know, it's pretty devastating to try to get rid of your collection, something you valued, but you're like, hey, you know what's collecting dust here? I can actually serve a purpose with it. So thank you so much, Anthony, uh, for what you're doing out there. Thank you for having me. And uh, believe me, it was, it's, it's been more than worth it uh, uh, letting that stuff go. And believe me, my wife's happy to see it all go away anyway. <laughs> Not collecting dust anymore. All right, Anthony, That's thank you right. so much. Uh, as a reminder, uh, we do have a couple questions here. If you do have a, a question for anybody from Easter Seals, go ahead and do the uh, direct message below. Uh, I'm going to send that question to Fergal Reed, again, spelled F E A R G H A L Reed. And we have a couple of those questions right now. Um, first off, from Lou Terhar. Lou, good morning to you again. Uh, this is for Scott. He says a lot of people might assume, and we spoke about this just a little bit earlier, but he says a lot of people might assume that everyone who has served is eligible for some form of government support. Can you explain why some former servicemen and women might actually be excluded from receiving those benefits? And then he ends it by saying, go Navy. <laughs> Thank you, Lou, for that. And go Navy. I understand. All right. So a lot of people don't know that <clears throat> When a service member leaves the military, they are formally discharged from their obligation to continue service in the armed forces. Unfortunately, or fortunately, the category of that discharge can have a profound impact on their ability to receive better benefits, to serve in government employment, or actually re-enlist in the military. There are five categories of discharge. Let me cover them real quick. What well, we know most of us are familiar with is honorable discharge. Somebody served honorably, they had an excellent career, and when they left the military, they're discharged honorably. The next category is called a general discharge, and that's the service member, their performance was satisfactory, but they failed to meet all expectations, and they are generally discharged. But then what happens with this level of discharge is at general discharge or lower, veterans start becoming ineligible for certain benefits. At a general discharge, veterans lose their GI Bill, which is several tens of thousands of dollars in educational benefit. The last three types of discharge, other than honorable, bad conduct, and dishonorable discharge, all be benefits are forfeited if a member receives that level of discharge. And I wanna put this in perspective. I had a good friend who is in Afghanistan <clears throat> And he and another soldier were responsible for ensuring buildings along their route of travel were free and clear of bad guys. They're going building to building and they went into one building, moving room to room to clear it. And three Taliban jumped out and attacked these two soldiers. Because of the close quarters, they ended up turning to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. And uh, luckily the two American soldiers survived, but the corporal that was with my friend had to kill one of the bad guys with his bayonet. So let's move forward a little bit. About a month and a half later, this corporal gets in a scuffle with another military member back at their base. You know, the, the sergeant said they were acting out. The commander who said, I have zero tolerance for this kind of um, activity, gave both these individuals a less than honorable discharge. So immediately that, that corporal who was in Afghanistan serving proudly, the military was going to be his life, was separated from service with a, a low category discharge which then all of a sudden forfeited all of his military benefit. Think about this. As Juliet said, as, as Gary said, as Craig said, we have veterans who dealing with PTSD, dealing, dealing with emotional stress. And do you think this person had an issue? We don't know, but possibly, and right then and there, do that simple act that commander gave him that discharge. At that time, he put all of his military or medical and VA benefits at risk. Luckily, 
we were able to guide him to apply for a uh, reinstatement of a better discharge, which he was granted. He gained back his emotional, I'm sorry, his uh, mental health and health benefits. And, and it's what we do. So we were able to help guide him back to a path of recovery. But something as simple as that acting out could have cost him his benefits. All right, Scott, thank you for answering that question. We have a question from Jared Bonvel. Uh, he says, I'm the Northern Kentucky Veterans Treatment Court case manager, retired Air Force, the best branch. His words, not mine. Uh, I'd like to integrate your organization into our courts, ASAP. Could we please connect on the next step? Thanks for all you do. Most definitely. Please email me at srobinson at eastersealsgc.org, and we'll get together. Thank you. All right. Anybody else have any other questions at all? Last chance to go ahead and click that chat button next to the share screen uh, and send those. Um, and boom. Oh, quick reminder as well. I just got a little message here on the screen. Uh, Easter Seals isn't just about, you know, the veterans who received those, those honorable discharges. Uh, Easter Seals serves every single veteran uh, of every branch. So uh, this isn't a narrow focus mission. It's a very wide mission. And anybody who's put on that uniform can walk through those doors and, and receive uh, help. And uh, by the way, that email address again, S. Robinson at eastersealsgc.org. You can reach out for additional information there and to connect. Uh, I'm not seeing any other messages pop up right now. So uh, obviously you have all your questions answered, which is, uh, which is amazing. We've done this within an hour's time period. I probably would have gone on maybe a little longer if we were having breakfast and chatting. <laughs> um, so, you know, I just want to thank everybody who decided to click on. Uh, we had well over uh, 70 people, you know, chime in here and, and listen to what the Easter Seals mission is about. Uh, and the, the ups and downs and the challenges for 2020 and especially during the pandemic right now. So please, if you can, show your support. If you own a business, look for ways to also add, you know, veterans to your workforce. We make an amazing employees. I'm telling you, we're, we're dedicated. Uh, if you know a veteran who's struggling also, reach out. Uh, it's real simple. Also point them to services like the United Way 211 Helpline and Easter Seals Military and Veteran Services. I'm here to tell you, you know, Chris and Jennifer, uh, if a veteran walks through that door, they are going to get a hand up. Uh, that is for sure. And they're going to get on the right track. Uh, if you're able to consider a financial gift, of course, you've heard how vital uh, the donations are going to be, especially in these times in the next month and two months and six months and next year. Uh, be sure to watch your email as well for information this week on how you can better support the Easter Seals Give Vets 22 campaign. Let's decrease veteran suicide. Let's get these vets, you know, the help that they truly deserve, the help that they earned, quite frankly, no matter their discharge. They don't deserve to go through life after discharge, uh, you know, on a stray path. They deserve to have that hand, uh, that helping hand, that hug from the community. You know, veterans have given so much to our, our country. Uh, I think all of us at one point or another probably have some connection to a veteran who has uh, taken their own life and it's not easy to deal with. And every single day veterans are making that decision on whether or not they should move forward or they should just end their life. And it's unfortunate and it can be stopped and you can be part of that solution through Easter Seals. So please, every gift, no matter the size, makes a difference. You know, again, look through your couch. 86 cents in there, donate it to Easter Seals. They'll put it to good use. Uh, but obviously, you know, bigger donations are great as well and a great tax deduction, right? Come uh, tax season. I'm not a tax professional. Contact a tax professional for tax advice. Uh, again, I'm Craig McKee from WCPO 9 News, Air Force veteran, go Air Force. Uh, thank you so much for everything that you do for this community, Easter Seals, and all the sponsors and everyone involved. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll keep trudging forward and we'll, we'll help every veteran here in the tri-state and beyond. Have a good morning. Be safe, everyone. 